place that I sometimes will put it as a half head. So we'll do both of them. Okay, so I assume you know where the lips are. Um, the label frenulum is the little flap that connects the lip to the thing, and I don't think it's really shown anywhere, so we'll just take that off. Nice. The oral cavity is the mouth, so this is going to be part of the oral cavity. Obviously, so with that. Um, the vestibule, we do see the vestibule, it's a little area between the teeth and the lips. It's like where you would put your toothbrush to brush your teeth. So it's there, and it's also in here. Um, the fossies is the opening at the back, so it's just the hole at the back there or there, so it'll have hole or opening in the, the wording so that you know that I'm looking for a hole at the back of the mouth. Two pointer. The hard palate is going to be made out of um, the bone, soft palate out of the muscle and the fat, and so you can see the hard palate here as well and the soft palate. Um, it's going down a little bit, but the uvula, the little hangy downy guy at the back of your mouth, right? It just is shown in cross section here, but it's actually just the little little guy at the back. Um, tongue. <laughs> okay, I hope you knew that before you came. <laughs> um, and then we get the glands. We have three salivary glands: the parotid salivary gland. Para meaning by and otted meaning ear, so it's the one by the ear. Submandibular and then sublingual. So submandibular is way at the back, sublingual would be further forward. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me make sure. Lingual frenulum, also not seen. So we're going to get rid of the lingual frenulum. That's a little, um, you know, if you lift up your tongue, there's a little flap of tissue in the middle that connects the tongue to the bottom. That's that. Okay, from there we move to the pharynx, which is the shared passageway. So it would be this area in here is pharynx, down to the esophagus. Uh, we can get rid of the lower esophageal sphincter. We won't worry about that. And then we're going to move to our stomach wall. So this would be the rest of the esophagus right here. It's coming down. They want you to be able to find the greater curvature, the lesser curvature, the fundus, which is everything from the connection of the esophagus up, so fun the fundus. The body would be all of this portion in here, and then the pylorus, which is the smaller end at the end. Um, they also want you to be able to see a couple things if we pull this open. Up at the top, you have the cardioesophageal sphincter. It's sometimes just called the cardiac sphincter, which is easier to write down. It's the one near the heart. So it would be this band of muscle here. Now we close down to prevent food and the acid from traveling back up your esophagus. Much more pronounced, you can see the pyloric sphincter. This is what closes off the bottom of the stomach so that food is ejected slowly over time into your small intestines instead of just dumping, which is bad. Um, they also want you to be able to find all the rugi inside, all the folding, and as I'm sure you're reading in your books, this is, allows organs to be distensible, so right, they can get bigger. They also want you to be able to find the layers of the wall. The stomach is really, really powerful. It has the three muscles as opposed to just the usual two for the rest of the system. And they want you to be able to find the circular, which you can see the banding pattern goes in this direction. This is the circular layer as it goes all the way around the stomach. The oblique, which they're showing you here, kind of going in every which angle, and then the longitudinal going across, unless there's another section of oblique, which I'm not seeing. Oh, these are the longitudinal, sorry. Here are the longitudinal, so then all of these must be oblique. So we have longitudinal, circular, oblique. Hard to talk. Do we need to take a break? Yeah.